Hi guys, Wandersun here. In this tutorial, I will teach you how to create pages and menus using the Pi One Dark project. If you are not yet a subscriber to the channel, please subscribe to not miss any news. Pi One Dark is now available with early access to Patreon supporters and on August 1st for free to everyone on GitHub. The first step is to delete the example widgets that come with the project to make it cleaner and easier to understand. Go to the setup main window.py file and delete the list as shown leaving only one item. These items are responsible for generating the left menus of our application. Once that's done, let's delete the example widgets that exist in our application. Scroll the script to where it says left column, after that delete the file to the location indicated in the video. After that open the main.py file, in this file we will delete the existing functions that have the application's paging functions and also to open and hide the left column of the application. After deleting these methods, we will create them again from scratch, so that they understand the process. Remembering that everything taught here is not a rule, you can improve the project as you wish. Leave only that function shown in the video that represents the function of the settings button in the title bar. After that open Qt Designer, inside Qt Designer is where we create the structure of our pages and menus in the left and right column of the application. Qt Designer projects are located inside the UIs folder as shown in the video, drag them to Qt Designer as shown, and then we will delete the existing widgets to make it more clean. Within the main page project, we can delete the contents of existing pages. Inside these pages we'll just apply a style sheet to make each page a different color to make this study easier to see. Apply the style sheet as shown in the video to every page. Don't worry about the colors, it's just an example so we'll soon see the pages being changed. The next step is to export our pages, go to the form menu, then to the view python code option. Click on the save button, then replace the existing UI main pages file as shown in the video. Open this file we just exported in your favorite IDE and change the header by importing Qt Core. Inside Qt Core we have all the PySide 6 modules that we are using in this project, which you can also change to PySide 2 if you want. When running the application we see that everything is working correctly. Return to the setup main window file, in it we will create three more left menus, that will refer to the pages we just created in Qt Designer. These menus are inside a list with dictionaries, where we can change the icons found inside the SVG icons folder. Put all the left menu icons you want to use inside this folder. Put a unique ID for each button, a text and a tooltip that will be displayed when the menu is retracted and the mouse hovers over the button. See that the menu is displayed with the function active, let's leave it as false. With that we will have only the button referring to active home pages. And when we run the application again we can see that it is displayed without being selected. With the show top function, we can tell if the button will be displayed at the top or bottom left of the application. After that, create another menu following the same criteria as the previous menu, which will be responsible for displaying page 3 of the application. Let's now start creating the button functions. Pi1Dark has a function that whenever a button is clicked on the left menu bar, on the left column close button and also on the title bar it is sent to the btn clicked method, which is in the main.py file. 
we can retrieve the ID of the clicked button, with that we can check its name and execute a function when that button is pressed. In this case, I will create these functions inside the main file, but you can create them in another file or class for better organization if you wish. So in this first function, let's say that if the BTN button is clicked, it will execute a function called, select only one, which will select only one button in the menu and this function must receive its object name. Note that when we run our application and click on the second button it is selected, and the first button is deselect. So now let's copy this same function to the other two buttons on our menu, so that when they are clicked, they are selected. Copy and paste the functions just changing the button ID, do this for all the buttons that are to be selected. The next step now is to change the pages as the buttons are clicked. Let's use the set page function for that. This function needs to receive the object referring to the name of the page we want to display, in this case page 1. You can check the name of these pages through Qt Designer if you have questions about the name. We can copy this code to the other functions and after that we just change the name of the page that should be displayed as shown in the video. When running the application we can see that the pages are being changed correctly as the buttons are clicked. If you want a button that just opens a new page and is not selected, just remove the function. Select only one that we created earlier. Let's now create a new button that will appear at the bottom of our menu. When this button is clicked it will display our left side column, where we can also structure your widgets using Qt Designer. The ID of this button will be called BTN Settings, and leave the option, Show Top, marked as false. Next we will create another function for this button however it will have some change compared to the buttons at the top, it will have a different selection to differentiate it from the others. Let's create a function that will check that our column isn't displayed, if it isn't it will expand the left column and display its menus. We are going to use the method called left column is visible, which will return false or true. To see what each of these functions do is very simple in VS Code, just click on the function and press the F12 key, and you will be redirected to the function and be able to see what it does. If our window is not visible it will be displayed using the function toggle left column. Then it will select our button but we will use a different method, called select only one tab, which will select our button but we'll leave it with a different appearance than the top buttons to be differentiated. If the left column is visible, let's check if the button to close the left column was clicked. If it is clicked it will hide the column. The default name of this button is BTN Close Left Column and it is located inside Custom Widget Pi Left Column. Before closing the left column, let's first deselect all active buttons using the deselect all tab method. After that we use the toggle left column method to hide the left column. If this button is not clicked, the action it will perform is just select the clicked button. See that the column is being displayed, but see that the window is not being closed. This is because we will never be able to verify this button without adding it to our verification. Add the verification as shown in the video. Note that now the button is closing the left column correctly, and also deselecting the left menu button that was previously active. 
Let's create one more button at the bottom of our left menu, it will have the function to change the page of the stacked widget, and it will also change the icon and the top title of the left column. We can copy and put this function we just created into BTN settings, and just change the object name as shown in the video to the ID of our new button. See that it is correctly opening the left column being selected, but now let's add a function so that the page is switched when clicked. First let's check if the clicked button is different from the BTN close left column button, after that we'll call a new method called set left column menu. In the parameter called menu, we must set the page we want to display. If you have doubts about the name you can also open QT Designer and check the correct name of the page, as we did in the application pages before. Then put a title for the left column and we will also set the icon path. I created a function called set SVG icon which uses native Python functions to locate the images inside the SVG icons folder. Using this function we don't need to convert our resources to Python as they will identify the exact path of the file. See that the title, icon and pages are being changed correctly as shown in the video, but what we need to do now is copy this function also to the BTN settings. Change the functions as shown in the video with the icon, title and page you want to display and run the application to test if everything is working correctly. See that everything is working correctly, all pages are displayed correctly as desired, but we still need to resolve two small issues. When we open the right column as shown in the video and then open the left column, the button in the title bar is still selected, so let's create another function so that whenever a button at the bottom is clicked, it removes the selection from the BTN top settings button in our title bar. And when the BTN top settings is clicked deselect all buttons from the left menu. Let's first create a function that when the BTN top settings button is clicked it will deselect our two buttons from the left menu as shown in the video, leaving the set active tab as false. See that an error was generated because I put the wrong button name in the function we just created. Let's rename it to BTN menu 2 and run the application again. See that everything is working correctly, but we need to solve the last problem which is to deselect the BTN top settings when the left column is displayed. Let's do it now. The first step is to create a variable that will receive our BTN top settings using the method getTitleBarBTN, which by pressing F12 you can also see how it captures the title bar buttons. Once this is done, we just call the internal method that each button has, which is used to deselect the button. So let's use this variable we just created to call this method inside the button functions at the bottom of the left menu and mark them as false. When we run the application we can see that everything is working correctly. You can improve these methods as you wish, if you have some doubt access the discord that i or the channel members may be able to help you to export the left and right columns of this project just follow the same path we did for the pages of our application open the qt designer go to the form menu then to view python code overwrite the existing file and finally open the vs code and replace the header with qt core as we did in our pages and when running the application we have everything finished. And we finish here another tutorial. Reminding you once again that this project is available with early access to all Patreon supporters who help this project become a reality. You will be able to download this project for free on GitHub after the 1st of August 2021, but if you want early access to this project, consider becoming a supporter of Patreon where you can help with 5, 10 or 15 dollars. It helps me to keep producing more content for everyone here on the channel and bigger projects like Pi Dracula and Pi One Dark. Thanks to all Patreon supporters.
See you in the next video.